happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. Why don't you start off with the story? How did this begin? What's the pre-context? Wherever you wish to begin. Right. So, you know, uh, Ranveer, the, Sufism is um, the heart of Islam, actually. Because um, Sufism is about love. Uh, love is at the core of it. And it's about uh, the oneness of uh, humanity and the oneness of the world. Basically, the story of Sufism begins from even before Islam, likely. Mm. Yes, yes. That is what many people believe. So, so the term Sufism comes after Islam. The term, and the term, technical term is Tasawwuf. That is okay. those who are following the Sufi path. Okay. And the, it's very interesting where the word Sufi comes from because this is a very good question which uh, often students ask. Where does the word Sufi come from? Because there are very theories of this, right? Because Sufi, some people said, comes from Sophia, the Greek word Sophia means wisdom. Mm. And from this, we get the term which we are used to, philosopher. Mm. The, it's a beautiful term, the mm. lover of wisdom, mm. philosopher. Mm. But philosophy, not, philosophy, falsafa, philosophy. Wow. But the thing is that this is not uh, really, to be honest, most likely. We don't know exactly where the term comes from. The other belief is also that it comes from safa. Safa is in Arabic means clean, pure. That is, we use the term also safai, safai mm. kardo means so they are as if they are clean but not likely not even from this term likely uh, and there's one more theory that this actually comes from the term suf suf means wool and they used to wear to show their poverty they used to wear uh, harsh coarse wool garments a cloak these people who started calling themselves Sufi. And so it probably comes from the garment that they used to wear. So what happens is that, as I said to you, you know, that is uh, the basics of religion do not satisfy pe some people. Whether people could be Hindu people, uh, Ved Vedic people, could have been um, Christians, could have been Chinese Taoists. Some people's soul just has... A yeah. deeper quest lined up for itself. Exactly. And these also is related to somewhat to civilization. That is, as civilization becomes more complex, more complicated, some people don't have to work all day for their living. <clears throat> they have more free time. And that free time actually leads to this search for meaning and this curiosity and this, mm -hmm. you know, existentialism, which we call, you know, this, ki kya hai? What, is, what is it? So, did mm -hmm. people leave their families to mm. become Sufis back then? This is a beautiful question. Because uh, uh, in Christian monasticism, you often leave your family and heretics and ascetics will leave. Um, uh, but not in Sufism. And this is actually in some ways similar to Hinduism, in some ways similar to uh, Vedantism. That is what started happening in India also was something similar. That is when Buddhism comes and uh, Jainism comes, these are also religions of renunciation. That is, you become monks, you leave, go to the forest, right, etc. And people were getting concerned about it. And that's when people start saying, no, you can stay in this world with the, your worldly obligation and still fulfill it. That is the message of the Bhagavad Gita, right? Nishkama Karma. What is Nishkama Karma? Nishkama Karma is that without having desire in your heart, you do your duty. Do your karam, do your duty without having desire. That is, you are still in this world, but detached from this world. You are fulfilling your obligations as a father, as a son, as a husband, but you are still detached from the rewards. So they, they stayed with their family, but were still following Sufi Very, principles. Yeah, ex exactly. So, in, in Sufism, so Sufism believes that unlike, say, Catholic priests, you don't have to stay a bachelor. Uh, and even in Hindu thought, you can be... Uh, Brahmacharya is good, but you can also be a Grihastha and still follow the Bhagavad Gita's path, Nishkama Karma. And similarly in Islam also, they believe that you should stay a part that is, when you're young, of course, may, you may not uh, be immediately married because you're somebody's student, disciple. Again, you have to have a Sufi master, just like you have a guru who, who teaches you the principles. But you have to at some point marry also and have children also. Uh, because you have to stay in this world and the path to actually serving God is by serving humanity because humanity is the reflection of God. Therefore, by serving humanity, you serve God. And so you have to stay in this world. You should not be completely detached. You should also uh, uh, be married. Uh, many, Most of them married. There are some exceptions like Bulesha or Nizamuddin Olia, but by and large, uh, they married. 
but how did the movement start was there like a leader who yeah. spread the word yeah so what happens is that as this as more and more people start doing these kind of practices and uh, they were doing it some were doing it on their own some were also influenced by christian monastics in the middle east uh, some were possibly influenced by buddhists or hindus also so there was also influence of manichaeans a large number of people judaic also people there were a lot of influences but what happens is that some uh, schools or what we call tariqa develops we use this word also tariqa in india but tariqa actually means the way the path so each school becomes a, a tariqa a way and then you have silsilas silsila means a chain that is from guru to shishya that is from a uh, peer murid who's called a master and then his disciples who are called murshid they follow in this and what, what is peer peer actually literally means old man in persian okay wise man wise man and but in it means the master also okay. in uh, in sufism so so different peers and so their uh, particular practices came to be associated with particular schools mm. in india there were uh, four important schools you might have heard the name also chishtia uh, starting with muinuddin chishti in ajmer whose darga is there uh, there is suravardi um, then there is qadiri and um, the fourth is naqshbandi and i'll explain later what they mean uh, so one of the big man in this area is a guy who lived in baghdad his name was abdul qadir jilani you also got a kind of give context in terms of how long after the prophet's death was this yes, period yes 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 very important it's a very important what you said just said because <clears throat> prophet passes away in about 632 from according to what we know 632 ad or ce however you want to uh, call it nowadays common era and these uh, practices start the earliest you could say starts with uh, hasan al basri maybe around 690 700 uh, etc that we have records of uh, and it becomes quite popular immediately in baghdad in uh, kufa in mostly in mesopotamia in iraq the area that we call now iraq basra and uh, uh, they start multiplying you know uh, in number uh, it happens slowly uh, but within a, f- a couple of hundred years it takes over the entire islamic world uh, in fact uh, you must have heard sometimes this thing about a guy called hallaj mansur hallaj you know in india also in a lot of the sufi poetry of bulle shah etc you hear this name he was a sufi po- uh, who started saying an al haq i am the truth now this in islam would be considered shirk it's a big crime because you are saying i am god but what he was saying was not exactly i am god he had achieved a state you you must have heard it also in uh, in the thought of shankaracharya you know adi shankara which we call shank uh, shankara he he has this idea that uh, tatva masi have you uh, no. heard this tatva masi okay it means that uh, you are that what what is the meaning of this now it's very mystical you are that you are what he's saying that you are god you are part of the universe you are part of uh, brahman and that means the whole of this universe including everybody and everything in it is one in modern days we would say this is monism not monotheism monotheism means one god monism means everything is one this is a state that you achieve after a lot of meditation yeah a lot of meditation it's called self realization mm-hmm. by some people mm-hmm. basically some i don't know whether this is equivalent of nirvana or some stage before nirvana but yes it I would is probably like to believe it is nirvana hmm. nirvana is a buddhist concept in hinduism we would say moksha this is a kind of a state of moksha but it's the same thing you're right the same concept nirvana and moksha the same so concept he yeah. meditated up to the point of yeah so he was moksha. actually yeah very interesting he was probably either uh, they believe he was of zoroastrian uh, origins his okay. father was a zoroastrian priest and he started meditating and he uh, he used to consider very interestingly he used to consider jesus christ to be a sufi jesus was a sufi according to him and he became a big uh, admirer to the point that people thought that he was not actually any more a muslim but had become a christian but actually he was n- neither of these he was m- still following islamic practices but he started meditating so much he went so deep that as i said to you what happens is that when you reach that depth 
you begin to realize according to ibn arabi that actually everything is one and the boundaries of the self collapse the sufis call the self as nafs your yourself or your ego is nafs according to arabic so for example the naqshbandi don't believe in any music okay. they are more orthodox they believe that the zikr should happen in quietness mm. you should not have any singing or any kind of zikr or even any kind of uh, what is called dancing whirling because you must have heard that there are these whirling dervishes you must yeah. have seen in turkey in khwaja mere khwaja <laughs> yeah 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 khwaja mere khwaja yeah mm. yeah and then, and they are singing kun fa ya kun yeah and what does that mean what does it mean it's very interesting it means that it is a line from the quran which says god said be and it was he created the world just by a command it's it's there in the uh, torah also in the uh, in the in the bible also that god said let it be and it was unhone kaha ho ja aur ho gaya you know it comes from there kun fayak kun showing the it's a kind of a mystical term which the sufis also use and it, and uh, you know so associated with that are also um, many things for example the term khuda what is khuda what god? is khuda yeah god but where does it come from khud a jisko kisi ne bulaya nahi jo khud aaya the one who came himself yeah who who came himself created himself and actually that story is there in the vedas also that story is there in many cultures because uh, uh, prajapati or pashupati or whatever you want to say the primordial man you know he how is it created he creates by sacrificing himself to himself that is the first sacrifice in the vedic sacrifices right so the from his uh, then different groups of people come out from his mouth comes the brahman etc from his, so he creates himself because there has to be a beginning here right so there has to be a beginning moment and that beginning moment uh, i mean ghalib has put it beautifully you know na tha kuch to khuda tha na tha kuch to khuda tha kuch na hota to khuda hota if there was nothing god would be there duboya mujhko hone ne duboya mujhko hone ne na hota main to kya hota it's a very mystical because ghalib also in his youth used to go to a sufi circle so that's what i'm saying it was prevalent all over the um, uh, medieval world everybody used to go mm. even ghalib who we think of as a modern kind of poet he in his youth also used to go to a sufi circle so so this concept was there <clears throat> so ibn arabi <clears throat> kind of popularizes it as i said about the 1200s and all that and the other uh, famous figure in this uh, time period is rumi you must have heard because yeah. his poetry is very famous in the west now yeah. i also Every- think the film rockstar was based on rumi's writings like even if you actually go into the story of rockstar yeah. with ranbir kapoor uh, a lot of the scenes have been inspired by rumi poetry even bullesha is very uh, inspired by rumi and actually it is the same thought is there in advaita for example you have heard this term you must have heard this term in advaitic thought shankaracharya made it famous niti niti not this not that not this not this that is what is god not this not this not this what is uh, ultimate reality mm. and uh, bullesha also has that in that song you must have heard of rabbi sher gills bulla ki jana mein kaun that's a song of bullesh bullesha's mm. so if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out this playlist for more videos just like this it's the artist clips